we haven't had a conversation, is that right, my friend? No, we haven't, no. Okay, fine. And you've just come along to this mosque in West London to have a look at an exhibition on Islam, is that right? I have done, yeah. Come down specifically from Northampton for it. Oh, that's a long way you've come from Northampton. That's like 60, 70 miles? Yeah, about that, yeah. Okay, to see this exhibition. Yeah. Brilliant. That's very, ki- that's very kind of you. And uh, we haven't had a conversation, as I've said. And uh, what are your beliefs, my friend? I believe in God, but although well, technically I suppose I was born Christian, I've never really considered myself to be Christian. Sorry, if you just come forward a little bit, my friend. Okay. And, uh, okay, so you're sort of born into a Christian family, but, you don't, okay, so do you practice Christianity at all? I don't know. Okay, fine. And what's your name, my friend? That's Bill. Bill. Okay, Bill. And what do you do, Bill? I'm a medical engineer. You're a medical engineer. Are you from England? You're English? I am, yes. Yeah. Okay, fine. You're a medical engineer uh, in uh, in hospital, is that right? Is it, yeah. Uh, no, I work for a, a manufacturer that uh, repairs the products. Exactly. Okay, okay fine. So you're a medical engineer. Uh, your name is Bill, and you're from England. Okay, brilliant. And you're sort of a Christian family, but you don't have any real practice or beliefs at the moment. No, that's right, yeah. Okay, fine. Okay. What I would say to you is, uh, my friend, to ask you a question really about Jesus, because your background is Christianity. The question I'd like to ask you really, Bill, is do you believe Jesus is God, or do you believe Jesus was somebody sent by God? That was one of the questions I had about Christianity, to be honest with you, the Holy Trinity and all that is one of the kind of sticking points I had with not quite thinking I was a Christian. I mean... It didn't make sense. No, it didn't, no. So, although you call yourself a Christian, you're not really sure about Jesus, is that right? Is that fair? Yeah, that'd be fair. Okay, fine, okay. What I would suggest is that Jesus is not God. Christianity teaches that Jesus is God, okay? The way it teaches that is it says it's part of a trinity, as you know, probably, okay? Because Christianity says God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, three in one. All three are not only um, separate beings, but they're actually part of God, what they call the Godhead. Okay, uh, this doesn't make sense even from a biblical point of view, I would suggest, because, for example, God knows everything, we can agree, he sees everything and hears everything, and in the Bible, Jesus doesn't know everything, uh, you, you know that? Yeah. Yes, because he says that of the hour, no one knows, of the angels or the son, but only the father, referring to God as the father in the Bible. So Jesus didn't know everything, so I would suggest he can't be God. God is the one who doesn't pray to somebody for help. Jesus used to pray to the Father for help, or God to help. We would call him God. The Father is God, we believe. Uh, Jesus, uh, there's no one greater than God. Jesus says, the Father is greater than I, he's greater than all. Uh, Jesus, so all these things, and Jesus used to sleep and eat and rest and, and, um, and so on, which would point to that Jesus is not God. Would you agree that logically it doesn't make sense Jesus is God, but then... In the biblical language, the Father is God. Would you agree with that? I do, yeah. Brilliant, okay, fine. If you believe that about Jesus, then you're very close to Islam, my friend. Really, as far as the belief in Jesus being somebody sent by God, would you agree with that? Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, it makes more sense. Uh, Sent by God with a message, and therefore he's a messenger of God, is actually the Islamic view about Jesus. And you agree with that? I would, yes. Yes. In that case, really, as far as the belief in Jesus is concerned, the concept of Jesus, the um, the way Jesus is, you're really a Muslim. Okay, that's what I would suggest. It might be offensive to you, but that's the reality. Okay. Okay, now, what was Jesus teaching? We as Muslims agree that Jesus was 100% correct. Jesus, you see in the Bible, went into the Garden of Gethsemane, Bill, and he put his head on the ground and prayed. It says in the Bible, or he fell on his face and prayed. Who prays like that today? Man. Yes, but which religion prays like Jesus by putting their head on the ground? Um, Muslims. That's right, Muslims, my friend. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the other female followers of Jesus, uh, they used to cover their hair and wear loose clothing. And what I say to people is, if you saw Mary today, hypothetically, and the female followers of Jesus, the disciples of Jesus, say here in West London, in the high street, what religion would you think they were? I think they were Muslims. You think they were Muslims. Jesus ate kosher food, which is the same as halal food, and he never ate pork. That's true. Yeah. Uh, which is the same as Muslims. Jesus had a beard. Jesus was circumcised. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And Christian scholar has agreed 
with me, or not agree with me, he said to me, he stated to me, that the fast of Jesus was probably the fast of the Muslims, a total abstinence from food and drink, same as the Muslims. Okay, um, so you can see in the, and Jesus had a beard, of course we know historically. So all these things I would suggest, Bill, point to the fact that Jesus' life, he was practicing the Muslim religion. He was praying like a Muslim, fasting like a Muslim, he was being circumcised like a Muslim man, he was uh, worshipping one God, he was, um, uh, and also he was submitting himself to the will of God. He says that, he submits his will to the will of the Father. And do you know what the word submission is in Arabic? No. Islam. Islam is the word submission to the will of God. A Muslim is a submitter to the will of God. So Jesus is saying that he's a Muslim to the Father. Therefore, he's a Muslim to, to God. The Father just being a word for God in the Bible. Okay. Make sense? It does, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, the next question I would ask you really, uh, Bill, is that uh, did Jesus complete his message? Okay. Now, when I say these things to Christians, they'll say, okay, externally he was a Christian, but his beliefs weren't... Islam, you know, he was believed. Then I asked Christians, what was he teaching? You know, what was he teaching? He was teaching belief in one God and worshipping God alone. If he was teaching Christianity, Jesus would have said, I am God. I am part of a trinity. I am the Son of God. And I've come to die for your sins. These are the beliefs of Christianity. He didn't say any of these things because he never said, I am God Almighty. There's some indirect evidence that he, he accepted worship, but worship in those days didn't mean that he's God, but it was just uh, people acknowledging that he was, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very important person. That's what it means in the Hebrew language. Yep. Makes sense, yeah? Yep, yeah, definitely. Okay. And uh, Jesus never said that uh, I am the Son of God, but in the Bible language, he talked about we're all children of God. And this is what he says in the Bible. Blessed are the peacemakers, they should be called the children of God. Uh, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Clear evidence in the Bible. And also, he, in the Bible, he taught us to pray. He should have taught us to pray. Uh, our, uh, sorry, God's Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's how Christians should pray, if Jesus was the Son of God. But he didn't teach us to pray that in the Bible. Jesus told us to pray, our Father in heaven. That means not only... Jesus' father, but our father, which means that God is the father of all human beings, which means that God does not have children, but that's a father-child relationship. That's what he's talking about. Make sense? Makes sense. Okay, fine. Brilliant. Uh, now, the other qu question really, Bill, is did Jesus complete his message uh, in the Bible? And I would say he didn't complete his message, Bill, because you're a scientist yourself and you can tell me what you think about this in a moment. But uh, he didn't complete his message because Jesus says in the Bible, I have many things to say to you, you cannot bear them now. The spirit of truth will come and what it speaks won't be from itself, but what it hears from the Father. That's what Jesus says in the Bible. So what do Muslims understand by that? We understand that Jesus is saying that the Holy Spirit, in Arabic, the Ruhul Quds, okay, a creation of God, would bring the words of Almighty God, which the Bible calls the Father, to us. Okay, that's what Jesus is talking about. That's what he says. <clears throat> we believe these words have been collected together to form the Quran. Now, let me get you a leaflet, if I can just leave for a moment, and then I'll just show you one moment, please. Sorry, I've got to leave it here. Now, this book, the Quran, we believe, contains the word of what the Bible calls the Father, which is Almighty God, yep. come down through the Holy Spirit, or Ruhul Quds, collected together by human beings to form the Quran. Okay. Now, as a scientist, I would like to tell you what do you think about this, please, if you don't mind, because you're a medical engineer. The Quran contains, <clears throat> this Quran is an absolutely amazing book. I would say, obviously, you'd say, obviously you'd say that when you're yes. a Muslim, but I'll tell you why. The Quran contains many scientific statements, okay? Embryology, you know what embryology is? Yep, yep you're a medical physicist, is that right? A medical engineer. Medi you're a medical engineer, so you know what uh, embryology is. Embryology is how, of course, for our audience, it's how a baby is formed inside the womb of his mother. It's described in detail in the Quran. Professor Keith Moore, have you heard of him at all? Uh, I have done, yeah. Brilliant, <laughs> excellent. Many people haven't. Professor Keith Moore, for our audience, is a eminent embryologist, 
uh, anatomist, by a professor of anatomy at the University of Toronto in Canada. His book on embryology is used all over London, in fact, still today. And, um, um, and he says the statements in the Quran about embryology were not known 100 years ago, let alone known at the time of Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. He doesn't say peace be upon him, but I'm adding peace be upon him as a respect. Uh, so he says that this book must be from God. That's what he says, and that's in the Quran. This, <clears throat> the Quran also contains a description of how the universe started with the Big Bang, which is now accepted by all physicists, really, majority of physicists, and it was discovered very recently. The Quran also describes how the mountains are constructed. The Quran also describes how the formation of clouds happens and the water cycle works. The Quran also describes the universe as expanding. The Quran describes how pain receptors are in the skin. The Quran also describes many, many other things. And yet this book, Bill, is a book which is 1400 years old. Okay, is that isn't that quite amazing? That that would sound like a miracle, yeah. Yeah, miracle. Okay, the Quran has remained unchanged for fourteen hundred years. It's exactly the same today, and this is not my opinion or the opinion of the Muslims. This is the opinion of atheists, Christians, Jews. Everyone else agrees the Quran has not changed for fourteen hundred years. Exactly the same book in the Arabic language. Obviously, in translations, people can translate into whatever they wish, whenever. But in the Arabic language, the Quran, which is the Quran, is in Arabic is exactly the same all over the world. Okay. It's a book that's easy to memorize and millions of people have memorized the Quran off by heart. So therefore, you can't easily change the Quran. In fact, you can't change the Quran. People who have memorized the Quran would know it straight away. They say, excuse me, that word doesn't, should be there. It makes sense? Yep. Okay. And this is memorized by millions of people all over the world. It contains a challenge from God. God says in the Quran, if you th God says in the Quran that if you have doubt, I'll tell you the exact words in the Quran, translated into English, of course. God says in the Quran, if you have doubt in what we have revealed to our servant, Muhammad, peace be upon him, then produce a surah, a chapter like it, uh, and call your helpers, your witnesses, besides God, if you are truthful. And God says, if you can't do this, you know, if you can't take up the challenge, if you can't do this, and you can never do this, then fear the fire, the fuel of which are going to be human beings and stones prepared for the disbelievers. Now, this is a statement in the Quran. So this challenge is there, and this challenge has stood for 1400 years. No one has been able to produce three sentences in the Arabic language which match the eloquence, the language, the style of the, and power of the Arabic, and also the scientific statements, and plus all these other characteristics. Okay, uh, and now, also, if someone wrote that in a book, as you know, as a scientist, if someone wrote in a book of science, this book is so brilliant, no one can write three sentences like it. Okay, I challenge anyone to do this. It's a very arrogant statement to make. It would be, yes. Very arrogant statement to make. No one can write three sentences like my book. It's an amazingly arrogant statement to make. However, if God says it, that's fine. He knows the future. Okay, now, okay. This book uh, contains God's challenges, as I've said. This book was given to a man who could neither read nor write. Prophet Muhammad could not read or write. Peace be upon him. That's adding more evidence now. Its words have the effect of changing people's lives forever. The Quran con does not contain a single contradiction, even though it was revealed over 23 years. Okay. God says in the Quran, have they, the non-Muslims, I'm translating English, obviously, from the Quran, Arabic. Have they not considered the Quran? Surely, if it came from other than God, it would contain many. Con they would find in it many contradictions. Okay. So, what the Quran is really saying here is that if a book, and this is logical, if a book has got contradictions in it, it might be part of the words of God, but it can't be 100% the words of God. Would you agree with that? No, yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, logical. Yeah, if a book has got contradictions, it can't really be, you know, forget about God. It shouldn't be from any human being. <laughs> okay, right? Okay. So, and yet, many religious books nowadays have got contradictions. I don't do criticize any books, like the Bible or any other religious books, but you can see what I'm saying. Because we're not here to bash Christianity. We're not trying to bash the Bible or bash Christianity. We're here to invite people to Islam. Okay. This book today, Bill, has produced a, a following of 1.7 billion people. Okay, 1.7 billion people, and it's produced the fastest-growing religion. And this is according to the Guinness Book of Records. 
Okay. When you add these statements up, Bill, would you agree that the Quran is quite an amazing book? A book that's the size of a paperback, you can see some copies over there, a book the size of a paperback, okay, which has got many, many scientific statements in it, and it hasn't got a single statement which is, uh, which contradicts modern established science. It's a book easy to memorize, a paperback that's easy to memorize, and millions of people have memorized the Quran up by heart. It's a book that contains a challenge. It's a book that's got no single contradiction in it, even though it was written down a little bit at a time over 23 years. A book that's produced a following of 1.7 billion people, no less, that believe that there is one God, who accept Muhammad, Jesus, Moses, and Abraham as messengers of God. Okay, and it's produced of, not just they were they're Muslims and that's how it's been, but it's still going very fast. People become Muslim all the time. When you add these up, would you agree the Quran is quite an amazing book? It is quite an amazing book, considering the time it's come from, or what it's revealed. Yeah. Yes. Would you say that it's a book that's beyond human ability to produce? Yeah. So it's a miracle. Yeah. If it's a miracle, that means it's from God because it only talks about good things. It can only be from supernatural being, either, I would suggest, even God or the devil. But because the Quran only talks about good things, it must be from God. It only talks about good things. It must be from God. Makes sense. So do you, can you accept that the Quran must be from God? Yeah. Okay. And the Quran says that the Prophet Muhammad is from amongst the messengers. God says in the Quran about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Inna ka al musareen. Certainly, you are from amongst the messengers to the Prophet Muhammad. That means he must be a messenger of God. If you've agreed that the Quran is from God, then the Quran says Muhammad is a messenger of God, then you, I would suggest you should accept Muhammad is a messenger of God. Are you prepared to do that? Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Now, if you accept that, uh, then really you're a Muslim. Your beliefs are Muslim beliefs. You believe that there's one God, almighty, all-powerful, all-seeing, all-hearing, and he alone should be worshipped. Bill, would you agree with that? Yeah. Would you agree that the Quran is the words of Almighty God from what I've shown you and from what you've already heard, your own experience? Yeah. yeah. Would you therefore agree that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger of Almighty God? That makes sense, yeah. Okay, then you're a Muslim, my friend. Okay, now you will see your life changing. Okay, and what you need to do is you need to confirm what you've just said in two sentences. The first sentence is, I bear witness, that means I am sure there is nothing worthy of worship except Almighty God. This God is almighty, all-powerful, all-seeing, all-hearing. Nothing happens without his knowledge and his permission. He is so perfect we can't imagine. God, a leaf on a tree in the universe, cannot move except he knows it. God comes between a person and his heart. He knows what you're thinking right now, what I'm thinking right now, what every single human being is thinking right now. Okay, that's his power, incredible power. Okay, and he alone is worthy of worship and the reason we worship him is a lot of people ask why do we need to worship him because he is worthy of worship a lot of Muslims don't understand this they say okay we worship him but why because he is worthy of worship okay, he's only he's the only thing that's worthy of worship plus he's worthy of worship that makes sense yep, okay, yep. yeah makes sense. so you agree with that statement that that there is nothing worthy of worship except Almighty God in Arabic Allah or that's his proper name we believe are you happy with that yeah okay so I would suggest you say that statement and by doing that you will have a very strong connection with God that you've agreed to worship God alone not Jesus as Christians do not anything else that other religions do but purely God alone w without any intercessor or intermediary are you happy with that yeah okay. so okay so uh, yeah now the second statement uh, you need to say uh, Bill if you don't mind is that and I bear witness and I am sure that Muhammad peace be upon him is God's servant his servant and messenger because the Quran says so and the Quran is the evidence would you agree with that yeah yeah so are you happy to say the two sentences yeah well, so. if you say that then you're a Muslim okay and what does that mean it means one day you're guaranteed to go into paradise in heaven and you'll be with Abraham and Moses and David and Solomon and Joseph and Jacob and Jesus and Muhammad peace be upon them all and you will have palaces to live in rivers of milk and honey and wine and beautiful partners to live with okay and beyond that the Quran says you will have a connection with God and you'll be able to see the Creator amazing isn't it and this message is not against the message of Jesus or Moses or Abraham in the Bible. It's exactly the same as the message of Jesus and Moses and Abraham and Noah and David and Solomon and Adam. 
these people, and all of them, in the Bible. So you're you're in good company. <laughs> makes sense? Yeah, makes sense. Are you happy to say the words? Yeah, I'll do then it. Then you'll be a Muslim, and then what we'll do is we'll give you a book on how to pray. We'll give you a book on how to pray, and we'll give you a copy of Quran, and you'll see your life changing. And the, the other thing is, uh, Bill, very importantly, if um, money or fame or power bought happiness, you'd see all these rich and famous, the football players, the fo film stars, they'd all be happy, but they're not. They're all into sex abuse or child abuse or uh, taking drugs or taking drink, and they're still not happy. Some of them commit suicide. Whitney Houston commit suicide. Why? She's so rich and famous and so much money. They're not happy. Why? Do you know why they're not happy? Because the Quran says, only in the remembrance of God do hearts find peace and tranquility. And once you've said these words, okay, <laughs> the example I give, it's a bit of a funny example, but the example I give is, you're, as a human being, we're valuable. You're like an iPhone 5. By the time somebody watches this, it might be an iPhone 10 or iPhone 20. Okay, it's a good phone. So you're valuable. But an iPhone without connection, without 4G, is not that valuable. Right? Without a connection, it's got no value. The same way for the human being. Once you've said these words, you'll have a stronger connection with God. You won't just have 2G or 3G, you'll have 4G, right? You'll have broadband. You won't have dial-up connection. You'll have a, and you'll see your life changing. You happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yep. Okay, so you say the words now. In English, you say, I bear witness. I bear witness. There is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. There is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad, peace be upon him. That Muhammad, peace be upon him. Is his servant and messenger. Is his servant and messenger. Okay, now you repeat the words in Arabic. Ash. Ash. Hadu. Hadu. An. An. La, la, ilaha, ilaha, illallah, illallah, wa, wa, ashadu, ashadu, anna, anna, Muhammadan, Muhammadan, abduhu, abduhu, wa, wa, rasul, rasul, lahu, lahu. Congratulations, my friend, you're a Muslim. It's a very, very big favor of Allah upon you. It's not your choice or my choice, it's his choice. Because Allah says in the Quran, no one can believe except with his permission. Okay? If Allah favors somebody, he opens their heart to Al-Islam, to submit to him. Because that's the biggest gift Allah can give you. And that's what he's giving you today. So congratulations, my friends, it's a very, very big thing. Don't take it lightly. I'll give you a book on Islam and a copy of the Quran, and you can meet some Muslims, and, uh, uh, and you'll see your life changing, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Never alone